Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Elasmosaur The Elasmosaur was a marine monster you would not have wanted to meet face to face. The skeleton of one of these beasts was recently discovered on Vancouver Island. Pat Trask, a tour operator who specializes in fossil hunting, was with a group when one of the visitors picked up something they thought might be a fossil. It turned out to be the finger bone of one of the most dangerous and terrifying creatures that ever roamed the seas. It was the finger bone of an elasmosaur, an aquatic reptile that lived alongside dinosaurs. Just a few months later, another guest on the tour picked up a small bone about the size of a hockey puck. This bone was later identified as coming from the wrist of the elasmosaur. It was about this time that Pat realized there was probably an entire skeleton waiting to be uncovered. Since then, Pat has found stomach stones, a humerus bone, and several other small fossils. The elasmosaur lived 80 million years ago. Although they were terrifying monsters of the deep, they were also exceptionally strange. The creature had a body similar to a turtle, except huge. It also had a long neck like the Loch Ness Monster and a mouthful of pointy teeth like sharp needles. Then there were its flippers, which it used to paddle through the water, and its short tail for balance and speed. Other fossils of the elasmosaur have been found in Texas, Kansas, and Alberta. Number 9. Acrocanthosaurus The Acrocanthosaurus was a gigantic and terrifying predator on par with more familiar dinosaurs like the Tyrannosaurus rex. And yet the fact that it once existed only recently became known to the public. Its name translates to high-spined lizard, and it was a truly massive beast. The Acrocanthosaurus has the title of the fourth biggest carnivore during the Mesozoic era at a whopping 35 feet long and weighing 6 tons. The only real reason nobody knows this dinosaur's name is because it's too long and too complicated. It doesn't quite roll off the tongue like T-Rex. What made the Acrocanthosaurus unique from other predators of its time were the neural spines branching from its neck and spine, supporting some kind of hump. Imagine your own spine with foot-long chunks sticking straight out to support a ridge along your entire body, like the sail on a Spinosaurus. It's so bizarre that researchers don't even know what exactly this monster looked like, if it was a hunchback dinosaur or if it had a sail on its back. The one thing that's for sure is that the Acrocanthosaurus had an excellent sense of smell. Researchers have been able to create a detailed map of the dinosaur's brain, which for some reason was shaped like an S. It had a very unusual brain with huge olfactory lobes that suggest an unprecedented sense of smell. The Acrocanthosaurus once lived all throughout the state of Texas. From the southwest to the northeast, researchers have found dozens upon dozens of Acrocanthosaurus footprints. It's believed these ferocious predators, even being nearly 40 feet long, operated in packs to hunt gigantic sauropod herds. Number 8. Pulmonoscorpius The Pulmonoscorpius is an extinct species of scorpion that lived during the Carboniferous period about 359 million years ago. Its fossils were discovered in Scotland of all places, and it was a truly terrifying prehistoric creature. This scorpion could have grown to an estimated 3 feet or more in length. Superficially, it was almost identical to modern scorpions. It had pincer claws for pinching, skinny legs for scuttling through the dirt, and a gigantic tail with a stinger on the end for murdering its prey. The only real difference between scorpions of today and scorpions of 300 million years ago is the size. The Pulmonoscorpius was roughly the size of a human toddler or a large dog. As terrifying as a giant scorpion is to think about, the evolution of the creature does make sense. Researchers believe the Pulmonoscorpius and other creatures like it grew to such preposterously huge sizes because of the oxygen content in the atmosphere. There was about 35% pure oxygen in the atmosphere during the Carboniferous, as opposed to the 20% in our atmosphere now. All of that oxygen helped even the tiniest of insects grow into unstoppable monsters. As for how venomous the Pulmonoscorpius was, no one really knows. As a general rule, the bigger the scorpion, the weaker the venom. If that's the case, it likely used its venom only to subdue its victims, and then it dissected them with its massive pinchers. Number 7. Serpentisuchops A new prehistoric sea monster was recently found in Wyoming. 
A team from the College of Charleston found and named a beast that swam the seas 70 million years ago. This was at the same time the dinosaurs walked the earth. The new monster is called the Serpentisuchops, or something like that. And it was like the real-life version of the Loch Ness Monster. Its name translates to snaky crocodile face. Maybe someone from the team can help with the pronunciation, but in the meantime, I'm just going with it. The Serpentisuchops had a long serpentine neck, jaws not unlike those of a massive crocodile, and a fat body. It belonged to a group of creatures known as plesiosaurs, which had large bodies and long, broad flippers for sailing quickly through the water. By far the most unique feature of this scary new species is its neck. It was like an underwater giraffe. To put things into perspective, a giraffe's neck has only seven vertebrae, even though its neck can grow eight feet long and weigh nearly 600 pounds. This plesiosaur had 32 vertebrae in its neck. There's a possibility its neck was almost 23 feet long, weighing multiple tons. And at the end of that unbelievably long neck was the head of a crocodile and the brain of a super predator. And now for number six. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Cause G and Eddie C who are new subscribers. Big welcome to you both. Thanks so much for watching and supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe for more videos about prehistoric creatures and mysterious discoveries. Number 6. Utah Raptor Grand County in Utah is home to about 9,600 people. It's a small community that also happens to be home to a large and terrifying extinct predator. It's here in Grand County where the only fossils of the Utah Raptor have ever been found. The Utah Raptor was about the size of a bear. It had claws that could shred muscle and flesh, and it lived 135 million years ago. It may also have been significantly larger than a bear, estimated at anywhere between 15 and 23 feet tall. It was larger than any of the raptors that appear in the original Jurassic Park movies. It was also bulkier, weighing upwards of 800 pounds. What a lot of people don't realize is that the infamous Velociraptor only weighed about 83 pounds. It was like a tiny baby dinosaur, a native of Cretaceous Asia. It looked nothing like the Velociraptor portrayed in movies and was little more than a glorified chicken. On the other hand, the Utah Raptor was the real deal. It had claws shaped like sickles on its feet. Each claw was nearly a foot long, equipped with keratin sheaths covering each one just like modern eagles. It could jump, lash out with its feet, and disembowel its prey in a flash. It also had long claws on its arms and serrated teeth in its mouth which it needed for chewing and tearing meat. The Velociraptor may be the most famous raptor of them all, but it was a pipsqueak compared to the much more terrifying Utah Raptor. Number 5. Hyenodon The Hyenodon lived for an unusually long period of time. Most researchers believe they existed all the way from the Eocene to the Miocene epochs, only going extinct about 20 million years ago. This was likely because there were so many various species of the hyenodon, just like different species of dogs. The biggest was the size of a wolf, the H. gigas. The smallest was the H. microdon, only about the size of your average house cat. No matter the size or shape, hyenodons were fierce monsters and unruly predators. They had gigantic jaws supported by multiple layers of musculature along their neck. All this muscle gave the hyenodon, which may have looked like a mix between a hyena and a wolf, immense bite power. It would have been able to break the neck of its prey with one chomp, then use its sharp teeth to slice the carcass like a butcher. Scientists have also identified an extra-long palate within the hyenodon's mouth, which allowed it to breathe normally at the same time that it wolfed food down its throat. Number 4. The Tapijara The Tapijara was a kind of pterosaur that lived during the Cretaceous period. Its remains were found in Brazil and dated back to roughly 100 million years ago. All things considered, it was a fairly small pterosaur with a measly wingspan of roughly 4.3 feet. On the other hand, it may have been preposterously large. The issue here is that very few fossils have been found, and researchers have never been able to agree on its size, feeding habits, or general appearance. Some experts claim its wingspan was up to 12 feet long, but its bones were so light it only weighed roughly 80 pounds. This means it would have been a terrifyingly large predator, something just as fearsome as an eagle, but way bigger. 
It also may have looked a lot more like a pelican than an eagle. Some scientists believe it had a downward curving beak that acted as a soup spoon to scoop fish from the water. But yet again, not all paleontologists agree on the soup spoon theory. Some have suggested its curved beak was used to peck fruit from the trees. And yet again, some paleontologists say the tapajara wasn't a predator or a fruit eater, but a savage carnivore that scavenged animal corpses. The one thing that's for certain and that everyone agrees on is that the tapajara had a large crest on the top of its head. The crest was likely used for attracting mates, but that's unclear. It almost looked like the tapajara was wearing a large and colorful helmet. The tapajara may also have been covered in fuzz, making it look like a grotesquely large bat with a pelican mouth and a red fleshy lump on its skull. Number 3. Carbonemis the Carbonemis was a strange and mysterious prehistoric creature. If we were to stumble upon this prehistoric beast now, it would definitely be a scary thing to behold. That's because the Carbonemis was a gigantic turtle. It stood at least as tall as an average person's hips, and its shell is estimated to have been nearly seven feet long. It lived in Colombia, with its fossils being found in the famous Cerrejón Formation. Technically, the Carbonemis belonged to a family of side-necked turtles called Pleurodera. These turtles are unique in that they have proportionately longer necks than most other species. Their necks are so long that they are unable to pull them back into their shell when they sense danger. Instead of tucking their necks into their shells, they bend them at an awkward angle to fit underneath the ridge of their upper shell, and then they lay against them. They basically lay on their own necks to stop predators from biting them off. Still, the Carbonemis wouldn't have had too big of an issue with predators. It lived roughly 59 million years ago in South America, a time when the jungle was ruled by behemoths. The only thing that may have even attempted to eat the Carbonemis was the Titanoboa, a 40-foot snake so big it wouldn't be able to fit through most doorways. Number 2. Meganeropsis permiana the Meganeropsis permiana, or Meganura for short, is believed to have been one of the largest insects that ever lived on the prehistoric planet. It was an ancient dragonfly that evolved 275 million years ago in the late Permian era. Its wingspan was roughly two and a half feet, and it weighed about one pound. That doesn't sound like very much, especially not for a creature with the title of biggest. However, do you know what else has a wingspan of two and a half feet and weighs roughly one pound? There was once a dragonfly the same size as a crow. This gigantic dragonfly was found fossilized in France in 1880. Another one was found in England in 1979. These creatures appear to have lived in Europe and were fierce predators. Because the Meganura was so big, it had its pick of prey. Its diet consisted primarily of other insects, which it feasted on mercilessly. As for why the Meganura grew to be so big, there are a few theories. It did live during the Carboniferous, when a lot of other insects were quite large. But its particular gigantism may have been due to the lack of aerial vertebrate predators. There weren't birds, and there were no other flying creatures to prey on the Meganura. This allowed it to grow gigantic and become king of the insects. Number 1. Andrew Sarkis the Andrew Sarkis was first described in 1924 based on a single piece of skull. All these years later, we still don't have any other fossils of this prehistoric predator. The creature has been described frequently throughout the years, said to have been a quadrupedal meat eater built like a gigantic cat or a prehistoric bear. However, it's impossible to truly understand what the monster looked like since we only have the top half of its skull. No other bones have been found and so most of what we know is speculation and educated guessing. Still, the popular theory is that the Androsarchus was kind of like a wolf, only it lived 43 million years ago in the early Miocene period. Some have estimated it may have been the largest meat-eating mammal that ever lived on the planet. But again, this is all based on the skull, and the skeleton size is extrapolated from the skull. Without seeing how its muscles attach to its skeleton, it's really difficult to gauge just how powerful the Andrew Sarkis was. As an example of what I'm talking about, the dire wolf is almost identical skeletally to the modern gray wolf. However, because scientists have studied full skeletons of the dire wolf, we know it had a much larger muscle mass. Its muscle attachment points were more developed than an ordinary wolf, 
and that larger muscle mass made it a bigger and more fearsome creature. The only thing that's for certain is that the Androsarchus was a major predator. It only lived for about 2 million years and then went extinct at around the same time the Himalayan mountains were forming. Thanks for watching! Which prehistoric creature is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you later! Bye!